Hey guys, today I'm just going to try to do a video here. It might uh, run a little long just because it takes me a while to do this. But I've got a hind quarter that I just quartered off my deer that I got. Um, and I'm going to process it up. This is the way I do it. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong or whatever. It works for me. So, you know, I'm not a professional butcher. I've probably processed <clears throat> on average about two to three deer a year for the past 14 years and sometimes you get rusty, you know, I mean, it's a year between deer, but like I said, this is just the way I do it, and this is what works for me. First of all, I'm gonna um, grab the camera and I'm gonna show you my setup. I just do this in my kitchen. Um, it was nine degrees last night, so this meat's almost frozen, it's borderline frozen. So it's gonna take me at least an hour, probably to process this quarter, um, between right now, which I've got it quartered and on the table, to wrapped and in the freezer. In that hour, or even if it took me two hours to do this, it's not going to get too warm. I mean, it was nine degrees out. Right now, it's like, I think it warmed up to 20. So, you know, my house is about 60. It's, this temperature is fine to come bring it inside and work on it for a couple of hours. It's not going to hurt it at all. So, let me show you what the quarter looks like, and I'll show you my setup, and then I'll get the camera set up, and I'll kind of show you how I go through things. So, here we go. All right, so here's the quarter. Um, I've got it on a piece of butcher paper. I've got a couple of cutting boards set up. As I take the different cuts off the meat, I'm going to put them in this bowl. And once I get all my cuts of meat in that bowl, I'm going to take them over to the sink and I have a colander set up and I wash all my pieces of meat uh, rinse them. You know, I don't, obviously don't wash them with soap or anything, but I rinse them all off. Uh, make sure they're, you know, no hair, no dirt, no nothing's on them. Um, that's also where I will just double check and make sure I got all the fat and all the silver skin off that I want off. And then I'll take it over to my island, and that's where I have my wrapping station set up. On this particular cut of meat, I'm probably going to use a couple of knives here fillet knife. I also have this bigger fillet knife. Some of the steaks sometimes get bigger uh, just for cutting them up. So anyway, that's what I'm going to get get started on. Um, I'm going to set the camera up and I'll get going. I'm also, I uh, don't have a trash bucket with me. I'm going to put a trash bucket so all my fat and silver skin and stuff that I don't want is going to go right in my trash bucket. So I'll get set up. Oops. <laughs> okay guys. The first thing I want to do, getting started on this, is kind of remove some of this fat and some of this silver skin so I can see where the different muscles come together. Um, that's all that processing this is, is just separating the different muscles into you know, separate groups. This hindquarters, this is where you're going to get most of your good steaks out of. Um, there'll be some trim, of course, and some roast. But in order to see where everything kind of comes together at, I've got to get rid of all this fat and silver skin. You can kind of tell right here there's a little bit of a separation, but you know I can't hardly really tell where anything starts or ends with all this fat on here. So I'm just going to start grabbing some stuff and just trying to remove some of this fat. If I wanted to, I could save this fat for rendering down, but uh, I'm not sure if I will or not. I just take this process real slow. I like to, you know, it's, it's an animal I shot and I want to try to save as much of it as I can. But you can see how it kind of just separates. Venison fat tastes absolutely horrible, so you want to make sure and get as much of it off of there as you can. Like I said, for right now, all I'm trying to do is just get this first little bit off of here so I can see what I'm working with.
I can see a separation right here. This is just a real time consuming process. You just want to go slow like, like I said, you just, just be careful. Just go a little bit at a time. This is all the good fat if you want to use that for rendering down. I've been told you can cook with it, but I can imagine that uh, whatever you do cook with it must taste like crap because, like I said, venison fat is nasty. So I think there's a separation somewhere here. I'm going to try to carve out a little bit of this fat, see if I can separate the muscles here. All right, well, I'm just going to keep trimming on this and when I start getting to the muscle separations then I'll get back with you. Okay guys, well I got some of the fat taken off of here and I'm starting to separate the muscle groups. You can see here this is starting to separate so I'll just cut that off of there. This is starting to separate here. You got some of this connective skin here you just kind of slice that out of there. This is starting to separate, you can see right there. You can tell there's kind of a natural line. So I'm going to try to follow that. Okay, this is going to be a big roast, I can tell. It's connected to the bone right here. So I need to get it off of that bone. And if I mess up and cut a little more of this, if I miss some of the meat and leave it on the bone, that's okay, that's just what's going to be trim. You can convert that into hamburger. Or this year I think I'm going to splurge and I'm going to take it into this place that makes uh, real good jalapeno cheddar beef sticks. Now I could do all that stuff myself if I wanted or whatever, but uh, at a buck a pound or whatever they charge, it's pretty darn cheap. And I think I'll just let them do it. But I have done, I've got an electric grinder. I do hamburger and stuff, but I'm also going to be butchering a cow this year. And I'm going to be having plenty of hamburgers, so I don't really need any more. So now I gotta flip it over.
All right, so this is mostly going to be, you could, you know, obviously you're going to want to trim this up and we'll show a little bit later about trimming this stuff up. But this would be good for, um, like if you don't have a grinder, what I've made it in the past is what I call stew meat. Now that stew meat would be good, you could, uh, it's not really stew meat like where you need to cook it for a real long time. This venison most of the time is tender unless you get some sort of real ancient humongous buck or something like that. This is a little spike, so anything on here is going to be tender. But you can trim this up and cut it into cubes and make like what I said I call stew meat. And you can make stir fry out of it or you can make chili. Um, anything that you'd like that you can make or that you would use, you know, chunks of meat for. Or, uh, like I said, you can, if you have a grinder, you can grind it up. But for years I didn't have one. It was just stew meat and you can do a lot of stuff with that. Put it in a crock pot, whatever. Anyway, here's a piece that someone needs to start working on as far as trimming. But uh, once you get the first piece off, it seems to go a little better. Wouldn't mind getting this piece off here. Let's see what this looks like again. So I can feel where it attaches to the bone here. I can feel that bone right in there. Now that's a nice piece of meat right there. Once I get trimming this up, I'll look inside of it, see how gristly or how much tendons inside of it, and I'll be able to determine whether this would, you know, I could make some chops out of this, or if it's got too much tendon and gristle in it, then it will be a, uh, you know, stew meat or piece of trim. But most of the hindquarters you get, that's where you get your best meat out of. So now I'm going to start separating the silver skin again. I want to try to get this roast out of here. Like I said, it's pretty cold outside, so this some of this is a little bit frozen. A lot of it'll work, obviously, as you can been seeing or whatever, work loose with your fingers. Then you don't worry about cutting the wrong piece of meat. Because if I remember right, this is all your steaks right here. Once I get it cut up, I'll be able to identify what, what pieces they are, but uh, pretty sure that's all the steaks. Let's cut some of this connective tissue out of there. Okay, there's a bone right there. I've already started to cut it, so I just need to cut the rest away. Alright, that's a nice roast. It's a, uh, I don't know, it's what I call a football roast, I guess. 
and this can be separated down even further if this is too big for your family or whatever. But uh, be smoked, put in a crock pot, whatever. But before, you know, obviously this needs to be trimmed up a little bit more. I'm going to get this silver skin off of here, a little bit of dried stuff. I'm going to get all this fat off of here. But for the roast, I don't mind. I'm not going to dig all the way, way down inside here to get all this silver skin. Um, for the roast, it doesn't seem to, especially if you put it in a crock pot. And for my area, my deer um, eat a lot of corn, a lot of soybeans. Um, it's a farming type area, so they taste real good. It's not like way up north um, where it's like a swamp buck where they're eating pine needles and you know whatever else they can to survive um, those you might have to trim it up a little bit more and maybe even add something to the crock pot like a pork roast or something to go with this but uh, my venison is, is not gamey at all um, it's I prefer it to beef actually it's just tastes awesome so you just gotta know your area and know your deer, but the more you trim, the more of this stuff you get off, the way less gamier it's gonna be. You take your venison in. I've never taken a, a, a deer in, but I had a bear done, and let me tell you, they leave a lot more stuff on it than I would, that's for sure. And I, I think my bear tasted a bit more gamey than what it needed to because of that. Now this is a blood vessel. I will probably dig into the meat a little bit and try to get this out, just like that. Get as much of that out as I can. All right, so this is another piece that needs to be trimmed up. Now, let's see what we got cracking here. What I'm doing here is just I feel the bone, cut it loose from the bone, trying to anyway. This is just a big leg tendon, I don't want that. I'm not too worried about this, so I'm just going to follow this leg bone and try to disconnect it here. But if I was real concerned about saving every last little scrap of meat, which I am, but like I said, a lot of it's going to, or some, whatever's left over is going to go to trim. But if you wanted them all, if you just wanted to be a little more careful or whatever, you could just, you could keep separating this, cleaning this up, and the muscle groups will become even more identifiable. rid of all this and you can see it a little better. So now I for sure can tell that's all bone. And I'm just gonna follow that around. I know there's a bone right there. Going slow, cut around the bone.
I don't think I needed to separate it there, but it's not a big deal. If I'd have kept it together, it might have been a bigger steak. Like I said, this is the first one I've done since last year, so sometimes you get a little rusty. But even if they're not huge steaks, you can still just make chops out of them. And I'll show you that in a little bit. I do a, a butterfly chop that we tend to like. Okay, now we got the bone out of it, and uh, this stuff down here I have saved in the past, but it's got a lot of tendon in it. Um, if I'm going to send it in someplace, I guess I don't mind trimming this or giving it to them because the grinder will actually take the tendons out. But if I'm going to make stew meat or something out of it, if I don't have a grinder, this stuff's almost not even worth taking. I'll show you it here in a minute. This one's not too bad. But like on the front shoulders and stuff, you get a lot of this gristle, but can tell that's a tendon, that's a tendon, that's a tendon. So these just take a little more work. But I'll, uh, I'll just remove this outer silver skin and throw it in the trim bucket and the guys that I take it to can worry about it. Like I said, that grinder will take that stuff right off. So now I'm just going to, same thing, just cut along where I can see the muscle groups and not be too finicky about it because like I said, all this stuff's just going to be trim. Start cutting hunks of meat off of it until all the meat is off of this bone. Like, all oh, this is still good. That's all good trim. So, we're going to process it down a little bit further and we'll get back to you.